Yes, sir. It's on uh, 327. Okay. Hello, uh, I'm Andrew Vernoy. I'm the dean of the college. And uh, thank you very much for coming here today. This is a very special day. It's a day when we get a chance to honor the work of uh, one of our uh, esteemed colleagues. It's also a day when uh, we can say that a variety of people from across the university and from within the college have gotten together uh, to do something that I think will be uh, absolutely a permanent and, and a, a significant addition to our college. The sculpture of uh, Bob Bruno, our, our colleague and, and friend, somebody I had the pleasure of not just working with, but also uh, every so many months having a, a, a fairly lengthy lunch. I'd always, I always would set aside about three or four hours to talk to Bob um, about his views about architectural education. It was always a lively conversation. He was a he has a, a great uh, proponent of doing architecture and doing art with your hands and with um, learning and, uh, and, it, and learning with your hands and also the intellectual capacity of, of working with your hands. Of course, a, a very important part of all of this is the willingness of the university to work with us. We have a great administration at the university. I'm, I'm very thankful to the provost office and the president's office, the chancellor's office, uh, for working with us um, on this. It's, took, it's taken about a, a year and a half, I think, to finally uh, get it here. And so I'd like to introduce to you uh, the senior vice provost, the, one of the chief academic leaders of our institution, and I like to say a good friend, Rob Stewart. So thank you, Rob. Thank you, Andrew. What a beautiful morning to be here to celebrate this piece of work and the legacy that it represents. We want to welcome you on behalf of President Nellis and Provost Skovanek, uh, both of whom are unable and regretful about not being here this morning. Uh, but I wanted to say just a moment uh, a word or two about the importance of this kind of project to us uh, in an academic sense, if you will. Uh, when we think about any kind of construction on campus, whether it be a new project or renovation, it certainly fulfills a, an important functional purpose. And whatever that piece of construction or renovation is, it's, it's going to have its own aesthetic qualities. But this uh, percent for art program out of which uh, the placement of this sculpture uh, came to us uh, is important because it, it just adds an additional aesthetic quality and uh, inspirational meaning, hopefully, uh, to the project that's just completed or being completed. And when we think about uh, this sculpture, uh, I don't know how many times in the last year I've driven by and, and seen it in very different ways each time uh, it's been looked at. And <clears throat> one of my favorite references to it, uh, reading an article about it, is that it looks a lot like an at at in Star Wars. And uh, that made a lot of sense, because it does. But I think one of its most endearing qualities is that uh, it could be just about anything. And in that, we hope that there would be some inspiration uh, to students, especially, which is why we're all here. Uh, but also some meaning with respect to um, how that kind of inspiration comes across through uh, the, the shapes and, and the material out of which this, this product is built um, and where it resides on such, you know, on days like this, moments like this, we, we're reminded Lubbock does have an urban quality to it. And, and on this very busy corner, um, you know, this is one of the most visible pieces of art on campus. And, and so it, uh, it has some significance in being pretty printed there and or presented here uh, on this corner. What I'd like to do next after uh, thanking you for being here and, and saying this word about uh, this project uh, is introduce Emily Wilkinson who is the director of our systems uh, public art projects uh, and is responsible in many ways for the quality 
uh, of art that's selected and the placement of these pieces around campus and we thank her for what she's done uh, on behalf of this project as well. And again, on behalf of the President and Provost, we want to thank you uh, for being here today and enjoying this occasion with us. Thank you very much. Well, I want to thank you all so much for coming out today. This is, as Dr. Stewart said, a couple of years in the making to actually see this piece here. Um, sculptures like the Bruno one we're celebrating today and others around you would not be possible without the Texas Tech System's great commitment to art. Through a Board, board of Regents rule initiated by Debbie Montford in 1998, 1% 1 of every construction budget, even renovations like what the College of Architecture had, uh, goes towards public art for the project. And this is a system-wide initiative. So it's not just here in Lubbock, but it's on the other T TTU campuses as well. Uh, since this was initiated, we've added over 100 artworks to our campus, valued at almost $10 million. And we are ranked in one of in the top 10 of campus public art programs in the nation. So Tech's really stepped it up for the public art. Um, the majority of our pieces are original commissions for Texas Tech. However, thanks to the vision of the College of Architecture, uh, the University Public Art Committee, who are here today, they have on black name tags, um, TTU President Dr. Nellis, uh, the System Chancellor Duncan, and also Chancellor Meritus Hans, uh, we were able to acquire this sculpture, which is one of Robert Bruno's few remaining sculptures, and place it here on campus. Um, I wanted to give special thanks to several others. This was a huge team effort to get this here. Uh, I want to thank the, ge the General Counsel Department and Mr. John Huffaker uh, for their help in acquiring this piece. Uh, I also want to thank Park Hill, Smith & Cooper for their design of this plaza. Um, Tynert Construction for the building of it. Um, Trumbull Crane for moving this piece um, here safely. And also the uh, Office of Facilities Planning and Construction where I'm housed out of. Um, Rick Rashida, Bill Droll, uh, Billy Breedlove, Rick Moore, Michael Molina, and many others uh, were very essential to getting this project completed. Um, I also wanted to point out that we were able to do a great collaboration with um, College of Architecture students. Uh, these benches that you're sitting on today were designed and fabricated by Upe Flukecker's uh, graduate student class. And um, if any of you are here that created these benches, just raise your hand so we'll see kind of the student work that went into this. And they were actually here on Saturday, so y'all are probably some of the first people to sit on those benches, so thank you for testing them for us. Um, again, I just want to thank you all for your support of the Texas Tech University System Public Art Collection. This is a wonderful thing that Texas Tech does, and we want to keep encouraging this program to continue. Um, our next one, welcome up Upe Flukecker, who is a uh, professor in the College of Architecture. Thank you all for being here and uh, first and foremost thanks actually goes to Robert Bruno who is no longer with us but this is the reason why we are here. Um, I'd like the idea of him somewhere orbiting around somewhere in the universe which kind of brings me to the shape of the plaza. The ellipse is actually a very historical uh, geometry for architects. Michelangelo, Borromini and others have tried it out successfully at various places. Texas Tech campus has circular plaza and pattern. I mentioned the Fluger fountain here in the center of the campus. The pattern right by me behind is circular and now we have an elliptical shape. So uh, the ellipse basically though as the term comes from uh, the Greek Apollonios uh, I'd like the idea that actually now somewhere also in terms of pattern, when we look at patterns of orbiting, um, the planets evolve around the sun like an ellipse. So in that pattern, I hope somehow somewhere Robert Bruno is with us. 
I want to make this short and especially I thank the entire design build class of spring 2015 for being participating in the bench design, also those who participate in the competition, but in particular Reese Scarborough, Jonathan Langdon, Zach Springle, Dane Gurnier, Alex Queen, Christopher Santa Croce, Chandler Cook, Patton Taylor, um, Rebecca Barnes, John Charbonneau, and last but not least, also our shop assistant manager, uh, Fred Portuis, and my colleague, um, Michael Martin. Also, a thank you goes out to the administration of the College of Architecture who made this come true as a vision and the 1% of the Arts uh, Committee, of which I was a member of years ago. So, thank you all very much. And I would like to introduce my colleague, Michael Martin. Thank you. Thank you, Upe. Um, welcome to a homecoming. Uh, in 1970, we moved into this uh, College of Architecture building, which at the time was a Department of Architecture. And shortly er thereafterwards, uh, Robert Bruno came on the faculty and began working on this piece, we believe, down in the courtyard. He completed it in 1974. His name's on one of the legs over there. In 2013, we began a, a delayed life safety project on the building. Uh, I served as a liaison between the contractors and the college for that. It was a difficult and complex project. I won't go into all the details of, of how that is. And at the time, I really hadn't thought about the 1% for the arts. And one afternoon, very late, we were out here on a Friday afternoon and the representative from uh, the project manager from FPNC said, we'd like to have the college think about what to do with the 1% for the arts. I, I, I was hit, I was kind of puzzled because even though we've, I, I was aware of the program, I kind of didn't think it would go with a life safety project, uh, which largely consists of installing a new emergency generator and uh, large fans and, and uh, water sprinkler system. So I was kind of puzzled by that and really uh, had a hard time dealing with thinking about what we could do. We don't have a large lobby inside the building for a big piece of artwork and besides that we fill the whole building with work of our students and we try to fill it on the outside as well if you've been down to our courtyard. But I slept on it and Monday morning I, I had the idea that I wonder if that piece of sculpture that I saw in 1976 when Robert came by our, our offices to see if we would be interested in integrating it in a project. I wonder where that is. It used to be at the library for a little while. And I couldn't wait to get here. I called my colleague Bob Pearl and I said, Bob, is that, because he often takes his students out to see it in the house. And I said, is that project still there? And he said, it was there the last time I saw it. Hopped in my truck and drove out to Martin Luther King Boulevard, 66th Street. You'd never see this sculpture uh, out there. I don't think anyone ever has, and it was there. And that began the idea of, of seeing if we could make it work. And somehow we were able to do that. And I guess I've sat through enough graduations that the words of Chancellor, of Chancellor Emeritus Hans kind of ring in my ears, dream no little dream. He always says that. Uh, this is one of Robert's little dreams. His big dream is his house. And um, I think that uh, what Robert would endorse and what we would endorse is that you would all take inspiration from this work and, and participate in, in Robert's bigger dream. Thank you. We, we have a couple of plaques that go on the ends of the wall here uh, that haven't come in yet, but copies of what the, the script will be are inside for you to see and I'm going to read it to you, and this was composed by Christina, his daughter, with help from others. And she apologized she can't be here today. The, this sculpture was created by a man who believed that one person could change the lives of many. His dedication to inspiring others through education and art was surpassed only by his love of passing knowledge on to others. While Robert Bruno may be gone, the legacy left behind enriches the world and those whose lives he touched. And now I'd like to introduce uh, uh, someone who's become a friend of mine and 
who was a key and instrumental in in making this happen along with a lot of other people but uh, our contact here in Lubbock for, with the family and for, for getting this project underway is um, Robert's business partner, Henry Martinez. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I want to thank the university, uh, first of all, and the College of Arch Architecture Department for inviting me to to do a speech here on behalf of uh, Robert Bruno. Uh, Dolores Quig, his mom, could not be here because of health issues. And Christina Bruno couldn't be here uh, because of school. The reason that they've invited me is because I have been around this man for about 22 years till uh, he was taken. This sculpture has been sitting at David and Gail Bentley's property for about 35 years. And they were kind enough to keep it. Nothing was ever bothered or anything. But where I see it now, to me, is uh, going to be in a better place because it can, it can be an inspiration to the students that are going to the uh, architecture department to look at this and say, wow, if a man can do this, why can't I? And my boss was very adamant that it's important that our youth and our students get their education. He would always talk to me about that when we would have lunch, dinner, or whatever. He, he was really adamant about this. This sculpture is roughly about 17,000 pounds in metal, and it's roughly 17 foot in height. These are details that were given to me by the people that, that moved this sculpture here. This is part of uh, how dedicated he was to his work. He was a perfectionist. If something wasn't right, he would take off the piece and do it again. It had to be right. It didn't matter if he worked six months on one, one piece or not. He would yank off a wall and do it again. Now, the other thing that, that Robert said is, if I can sit under this structure, what is not to stop me from building a house that I can live in it? Well, in 1974, he took off on that after he built this. So now there is a still house out at Lake Ransom Canyon that is well known across the world, not just the U.S., the world. It's been visited by Discovery Channel, uh, Home and Gardens, the universities, Vogue magazine, Twill magazine, Architecture Digest, it's a beautiful sculpture in a much bigger sense than what y'all see here. That house is uh, 2,200 feet in space, and I'm not gonna say square feet because there's nothing square about it. And it's also 110 tons of steel. He worked on this house for 34 years, proficiently, all the way, all the time. While he was working on this house, he had a lot of people that were interested in this home. Now that this sculpture is here, this house is gonna get more uh, exposure. I know, I feel it. I think I'm gonna move town because everybody's gonna come after me. But anyway, uh, the other thing that he was involved with is there is a house down the street from the still house that is a house made out of rock that belongs to Mark Lawson. And he was a very good friend of mine and all of Robert, and he helped him with that design. Instead of it being all steel, this house is made of nothing but rock. Now, the reason that I'm involved in all of this is because I started, he started a company called PNR Surge Systems Inc. 
That's why you all see a lot of T-shirts around here. That's our company. He designed a valve and controller to help conserve water, time, and energy for the whole agricultural sector. We're in all parts of the U.S. We're in South America, Central America, and we're well known because of this application that he also invented. And I started working for him in 1986. And I've been with, I, went, I was with him all the way till March, the ni uh, March 9th, 2008. That's when he passed away on me. Well, I've been grateful to be part of his life. I've learned a lot from him. I am trying to do the best I can to continue his legacy. Not only the company, but whatever I can do, like with things like this. And I'm directly involved with visitation, also with this steel house. And that's why I was invited to be here. And I'm grateful and I'm honored to be here. Now, <clears throat> Robert Bruno didn't care about material. I'm, striving, I'm still driving his old truck, a 1987 Chevy Silverado. He didn't have a lot of money. All he cared was about the sunset, the sunrise, the well-being of the people, <clears throat> the economy, especially the education of our youth, and then sometimes we would talk politics. But he was very knowledgeable and I learned a lot from that man that I'm never going to forget. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is, it's my understanding uh, by, Mom, by Michael Martin that there is going to be visitation at the still house this evening from uh, 5 to 8 or until I'm pretty sure it's still going to be daylight. I don't want anybody in there after it gets dark because I don't have very much lighting. But if anybody has any questions, I'll be around and they can come up to me. I want to thank Michael Martin and Emily Wilkerson, Wilkinson and the, all of the College of Architecture Department big people and of course the university for uh, pulling this off and I am proud and happy to have been a part of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Henry. Yes, sir. So, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all for coming today. Um, just a small story, a personal one with regard to Robert. Uh, when I arrived here in in uh, July of 2002, my, uh, my wife and my mother-in-law went out to Ransom Canyon and uh, to try to see if maybe there was a place for us to live out there. And, and they saw the Bruno house, and so they stopped. And Robert, ever the very generous person, sat down with them and talked to them about the house. I think they were there for about an hour and a half. My mother-in-law has a photograph of the house in her kitchen, actually, right now. Robert was very generous with his time. All of us have spent time talking to Robert at one time or another. And this is a symbol of that generosity. And it's a symbol of how that generosity in, inspires people to think in a more global sense about art, and about architecture and how it can create and celebrate life. So um, thank you very much for coming.